you very much. OK, so um, a, a good welcome to everybody for tonight, uh, to, tonight, <laughs> this afternoon's um, subcommittee um, at Neath Port Albert Council. It is the uh, 17th of January 2022, just shortly after 2 p.m. in the afternoon. I am the chair of this committee, subcommittee meeting today. Uh, my name is Suzanne Patterson and um, I will now um, ask everybody to uh, switch off your microphones unless I call on you to speak. Um, I thank you all for coming and showing interest, but would you please raise your hand if you wish to um, announce you wish to say something or if there's a problem, do not use the chat function because that lasts um, longer than the meeting and it's there for all time. So we don't want any debate in the chat function. Um, so just use your electronic hands. Just uh, acknowledge to me everybody knows how to do that. Yeah, simple. Thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. OK, great. OK, um, there we are then. Um, there'll be two items today and we'll be running them all as per the agenda that was published. So first of all, I would like to ask Nadine Jones, who's the Democratic Service Officer, to take a roll call of all members present at today's meeting, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so Mark, who was present, Councillor Padson. Um, I am. Councillor Whitelock. Present, thank you, Nadine. Councillor Pretheraw. Present, thanks, Nadine. Councillor Mason. Yeah, for you, Nadine. Uh, Neil Chapel. Present, Nadine, thank you. Gavin White. Present, Nadine. Is Peter Malach attending? No, he won't be attending this meeting. No worries, that's fine. Um, Matthew Pips. Pips, sorry. That's fine. Yes, uh, present. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sarah too. Yeah, present. Thank you. Ollie Bartlem. Yeah, present. Thank you. Rob Dudley. Yes, present. Thank you. Colin Brown. Yes, present. Thank you. And Frida Patel. Yes, present. Thank, Thank you. you, Chair. OK, um, I will now go on to uh, declarations of interest from members of the subcommittee. Um, if any member has any declarations uh, at this point, you are to tell me. Nadine, can you see any hands raised? No, no, no declarations then. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> um, would you please? Oh, right. So then um, the substitute, which is today, um, Councillor Meisen. Um, because there were no um, interests to declare, uh, you can be dismissed if you wish to. You're welcome to stay, but you can be, you can go. OK, thank you, Chair. Thank I, you. I, thanks I, very I got things to do, so I, I Yeah, thanks very much for being thank the substitute much. today. Well, Lovely. OK. Nadine, can you please confirm we are corporate for this meeting? Yes, we are, Chair. Thank you. OK, um, just want to check now for documentation. Um, the bundle was um, published and I believe that subsequent uh, information to the bundle was sent out by email to all interested parties. So we've all had this, the same information. OK. Um, right then. So at this point now, um, I'll be just running through a little bit on how the meeting was is going to progress. I'm going to take submissions from all interested parties first. And then we will go through in turn to anybody that has any questions for anybody else that has spoken. I just find that that's the, the best way forward. If anybody does have any questions about procedure throughout the meeting, just raise your hands and I'll do my best to, um, to answer that for you. So with that being said, I'll go on to the report from the Legal Regulatory Services. Uh, Mr Chapel, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. 
Uh, we're on to uh, agenda item three uh, in the report. This is an application for the grant of a premises license for Old Park Farm, Water Street in Port Talbot. Mm -hmm. uh, the applicant being Climax Promotions and Events Limited. Members will note from the report that the application proposes to permit a maximum of eight event days per year, taking place between a Thursday and a Sunday only. But will also include a Monday where that Monday is a bank holiday. Uh, prior to this application being submitted, members, uh, the applicant has engaged quite extensively with the Council Safety Advisory Group. Um, the Safety Advisory Group, for those who don't know, contains uh, representatives from the Licensing Authority, from the Police, from the Fire Brigade uh, and Environmental Health, uh, all of which are responsible authorities under the, the Licensing Act, uh, but also includes uh, various uh, internal departments of the Council, uh, the highway uh, section dealing with traffic, structures, estates, uh, health and safety, uh, just to name a few. Um, members will note, uh, in respect of this application, there were several representations received. Um, if I can just run through those very quickly, um, you'll note that Appendix 1, there is a representation there from the Legal Regulatory Services Officer, um, that is uh, Peter Malock uh, representing the Licensing Authority. Um, he requested additional conditions be attached to the licence, and these conditions have been approved and agreed with the, with the applicant. Uh, at Appendix 2 and 3 uh, of the report, there are representations from two residents living close to the proposed uh, licence premises. Members will note that both these representations pose a number of questions to the licence holder, uh, specifically around security and control measures, traffic and pedestrian management, and noise and the clean-up of the site. Uh, the residents are in attendance uh, at the meeting today, Chair, um, yep. and they will of course have an opportunity to address the committee in due course, and they will be given the opportunity to expand only on what they've raised in their uh, representation so far. Um, members will then note that Appendix 4, there is a, a response from the applicants uh, to the residents. And then finally at Appendix 5, um, there is a, a representation from the police, however there was a, a no representations in, in this particular case. Uh, I've, I've included it however because it <coughs> does contain some additional details about the engagement that has taken place between the applicant and the police. Um, as you mentioned earlier, Chair, there are some other documents that have been circulated uh, since the report was published. Uh, hopefully everybody has received these by email. Um, and in addition, there's also a plan of the premises which, which I've circulated. Um, and that shows the location of the, the proposed premises along with uh, the locations of the, the two residents with us today. Chair, the recommendation today is that members determine this application after hearing all submissions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chapel. Yeah, I just wanted to point out Appendix 1 starts at page 19 and then they just follow on just in case you wanted to look them up then. OK, right. Okay. Bear with me. I'm, I'm, I do apologise. I'm doing everything by paper today because I had difficulty getting into um, my um, online services. So just you'll have to bear with me just to find it's not as easy to find pages when you're turning papers. OK, uh, all right. So the next person then um, to uh, call on then would be the applicant. And sure. the, sorry. Sorry, sorry to uh, interrupt. Um, I think the next stage is question whether there's any questions to the legal regulatory services manager. Um, I think thought we were going to do this like I was going to take all submissions then we were going to go through questions in turn is that correct uh, that's fine chair if you want to follow that process yeah I'm not I'm not stopping um any questions but I just find sometimes it's easier to have everybody can say what they've come to say and then I'll go through everybody in turn asking them if they have any questions for anybody else that's already spoken so uh, everybody will have their turn, but that's that's just um, the way we we will do that today. If that's all right, Mr. White. Certainly, Chair. I, 
certainly chair i was just following um i know process, but certainly yeah okay uh, that's fine then okay so that being said then we'll uh, i hope that's clear to everybody now as well yeah no it's right okay um, so we're going to I'm going to call on the applicant and or representatives to speak now on behalf of their submission. Uh, Mr Phipps. Madam Chair, that's me. Yes, fine. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the introduction and explanation of the procedure. Uh, my name is Matthew Phipps from TLT Solicitors. Just to explain the way in which I'm proposing to do um, this hearing, I, I keep wanting to say this morning, but of course this afternoon is uh, what I need to remind <laughs> All myself. All right, we'll get say. your gist. Yeah. Um, uh, is I, I'm not proposing that we do a sort of Q&A or that we pretend we're in court or any of that sort of nonsense. I'm going to give you a presentation on uh, the application and the applicants. Uh, you can see that I'm accompanied by Robert Dudley, Sarah Tew and Ollie Bartram from the applicant company and their providers. Indeed. In your procedure, it provides for an opportunity for those who accompany the representative to speak. They're mm -hmm. not going to speak for long, but I am going to ask them just to introduce themselves to explain who they are and what they do uh, when I've finished speaking, if that's OK. And then obviously, if there are questions, Absolutely then, fine, then, then turn Pitt, to that. Yeah. So in terms of the um, application, um, I'd like to start really by um, uh, talking to the applicants. In the additional papers that were circulated on Friday and I think later this morning, there are two what I'm going to call capability statements. One about uh, Climax uh, events and escape records, the associated business, and one about We Are The Fair, which hopefully you will have in front of you. Appreciate the point you make about working to, to paper, oh, I've um, got <laughs> councillor. But but the um, I think the the climax one was circulated by Nadine earlier this morning. The others I think uh, yeah. were circulated on Friday. I'm not planning, subject to any questions that you'll have in due course. I'm not taking you through these line by line or page by page. I, I'm sure the committee had a chance to give them some consideration. But I will say, in terms of the uh, climax uh, document what it does do is introduce the experience and expertise that they have for events and activities of this sort just this sort uh, and predominantly what we say and perhaps the, the material point for um, this afternoon is that they first of all have ac undertaken activities of this sort size and significance throughout South Wales for a number of years, successfully I might add, but they're also accompanied and supported by experts effectively uh, who assist with licensing, health and safety, the production uh, and so forth. And obviously uh, you can hear from Rob, Sarah and Ollie in due course. A little bit about um, Ollie, a little bit about We Are The Fair in that document and, and particularly about health and safety and so forth. The We Are The Fair uh, capability document, uh, again, I don't need to take you through it, but you will not have missed that I think something like four plus pages in the middle of it are a list of the events and activities in which they have been involved, giving you an indication of capacities and size through the course of the last several years. And then there is a page or so, probably best part of uh, page and a half of testimonials giving you a little introduction to activities and events they've put on and I appreciate no good for the printed version but for your colleagues there is essentially in those documents if they've been circulated online Thanks. links into the case study I I'm not expecting anyone to have read the case studies in in any depth but it, they're there for you when you come to retire if you have concerns about experience or expertise Obviously, I'll uh, ask you to have a little look through that. Okay. Next thing of significance then also circulated Friday was an email from my uh, self. Um, I think it's titled email summary from the applicant. Um, again, I'm not going to be taking you uh, line by line through it and I'm certainly not planning on reading it, but I'll just highlight a couple of points within it if I may. Mm -hmm. The first is that in the operating schedule, the conditions of the license, you will see that there are 81 conditions proposed. Uh, 
and you will, uh, I suspect that you're ahead of me there, Councillor, you'll have a view on, and you'll probably know only too well, how few premises that you have within the uh, council area with 81 licensed conditions. It's a, it's a larger rather than a smaller number. But as you would expect for an event of this sort, quite right that it does have a comprehensive operating schedule. And as Neil helpfully highlighted, that operating schedule uh, was derived from both the uh, applicant's experience, but also from the pre-application consultation and dialogue that they undertook with the police and other officers prior to the submission of the application. I'll return to the police sort of non-representation in due course, but it probably easily explains why you get limited contact with officers for the best of reasons, because they've had the dialogue and the discussion, they've ironed out their concerns and issues before the application was even submitted, and your licensing policy uh, certainly seems to me to encourage that, although I will accept, and I'm sure Mr White will correct me, I am bound to say that I did review the licensing policy on the basis of your old policy, my uh, fault uh, entirely, um, but I am sure that there are words to that effect in your existing uh, one. I'll turn to the policy in, in the fullness of time. But the uh, conditions are also effectively accompanied uh, by a proposed uh, event management plan. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the 81 conditions, what you have is an event management plan is in, as is entirely proper practice for events of this sort. That is a document that, for want of a better phrase, houses all of the policies and procedures that will go to form the, I suspect, several A4 ring binders of materials, risk assessments, etc., that go into events of this sort. Mm -hmm. And in this email summary I've provided, you'll see I've particularly identified and drawn your attention to the conditions that cover that, condition eight uh, and uh, so forth. I, I am going to go back through the conditions in your agenda in, in due course. Um, further then down through the uh, email, you'll see bottom of, I think, the um, third, uh, second page, forgive me, is reference to the pre-application consultation, which I've touched on. Yeah. Then into the third page, there is some commentary about the responses that we've provided to the uh, objectors uh, through the course <laughs> of the dialogue. So just to explain that, when the objections were received, those were circulated helpfully by your licensing team. Um, Rob Dudley on this call then provided a response to both. That was provided to Neil and his team, and then they in due course circulated that to the objectors. And that is not uh, word for word everything that was said to them, but I hope that that page three is a fair summary of the points. Uh, and those points, as Neil's identified, talk about security, traffic, pedestrian and vehicle, noise and what I've called cleanup. Clean up. It's more, I think calling it litter is to slightly marginalise it. There's a bit more than, than litter, to be fair, that needs to be thought about uh, in these events. So, so that's the email that covers that. Um, then if I may, I'm just going to uh, take you just through the agenda. I will slightly canter through it if, if that's acceptable, but yeah. I think it may be helpful just to go through that, that document. Um, Okay. I'm of course scrolling through it on screen. Councillor, just shout if I if I get a bit ahead of myself uh, in doing that. So first couple of pages are uh, broadly procedural, and then you're into page three, which introduces the application, um, and then page four, the executive summary. Uh, nothing particular to add. The hours uh, and the proposals are then set out across pages uh, five, six, and seven. And you come to the operating schedule, the conditions um, at um, page uh, eight, about a third of the way down. So I'm just going to make reference to some of these, please. Um, 72 sets out the number of uh, days uh, in which activities can take place and the obligatory discussion and dialogue with the responsible uh, authorities. Um, 73 explains that the safety advisory group will be closely involved. And as an example, they'll have 16 weeks notice of the event days. Just to be very clear, the event days proposed are the 3rd to the 5th of June this year. 
um, and and that dialogue is is ongoing, obviously. And then each event will be presented annually to the safety advisory group at 74. The event management plan at 77. And the first draft of that event management plan will be shared no less than four months prior to the first event. And as you will see at uh, condition L, it's numbered 80. It, it's not condition 80 in the original application, but on um, page nine, condition 80, it will include a variety of policies and procedures. And in due course, I'll just take you to the index that we've provided to show you all that it will contain. Uh, if you are wondering in any way why the whole event management plan has not been produced, uh, apart from issues of significance, because some of the issues contained within it wouldn't be material for today, you'll appreciate that those documents are very rarely shared in an open forum, not least because they contain security and stewarding provisions, protect duty considerations that I don't think the police, let alone my clients, would be happy uh, sharing in a in a public forum. That's not in any way to to marginalise the engagement of this committee. Um, 83 first year proposed for this uh, application uh, is some what well, I'm going to call it 20,000 um, uh, as a number. Um, 87, which is onto page 10, experienced and security and stewarding company to be um, appointed. Um, 89, some detail about the security and stewarding uh, obligations in dialogue with the safety advisory group, South Wales Police. 95, incident register, and forgive me if I canter through the rest, 96, alcohol management plan, um, 107, drugs policies, uh, 112, event management plan to be developed in line with best practice, 113, suitable and sufficient uh, risk assessments, and fire risk assessments. Uh, 114, the license holder and relevant stakeholders to conduct a site inspection prior to the premises opening to the public. Um, risk assessments in line with health and safety obligations under 116. First aid provisions under 117. Stages closed in a staggered fashion at 137. Noise management consultancy at 138, and, and I will just in due course ask the committee to look at conditions 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, because they do go to issues of noise, which are fairly raised by the residents. So noise management consultant to be engaged, to work with your environmental health officers to implement a noise management plan. The noise manager effectively to monitor noise levels uh, to ensure delivery at the event uh, and DB uh, the, the levels to be made available to environmental health. Residents to receive notification of the event. A hotline number to be provided so that anybody can contact the event during the event in the event of any concerns or complaints. Uh, and that takes us up to 141. Uh, litter then, uh, I'll not read the whole condition at 142. Uh, um, into 151, a challenge 25 policy to operate for the protection of children. That's to say, as I'm sure committee know, anyone who appears under the age of 25 will be challenged for age. Um, then bottom of page 16, reference to uh, Peter Malou, the uh, legal regulatory uh, services, um, and that representation is within your papers. I'm afraid it is a bit of a, a scroll down or a, 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 a turn across, um, and that is set out on, forgive me, I'm scrolling through to find page it myself. 19. Oh, thank you uh, very much. Um, no, forgive me. I was actually meaning the the um, the representation itself. Oh, I beg your pardon. Um, forgive me. And that is, if I just find find that. Sorry. Um, that I think is after the police representation. Forgive me. Matthew, I think uh, page 19 is, is, is the representation. For ah, sorry, forgive me. Yeah. Ah, yes, sorry, found it. So in terms of 
uh, Mr. Malou's representation. Councillors, you'll have the opportunity to read it yourself, but a couple of points from me. So first of all, a site meeting taking place on the 29th of September. Uh, the 80 conditions touched on. Um, the event management plan touched on bottom of page 19. Um, page 20, as you'd expect, key stages with documents being submitted in good time. Further then reference to the traffic management plan. So very much like the noise management plan, a traffic management plan to be produced, circulated and engaged with all the officers in respect of the delivery of traffic, pedestrian, vehicle, etc. But what Peter then goes on to ask is the four conditions that are at the bottom of page 20. And effectively, the last one is probably the one of perhaps most uh, significance that the event management plan is to essentially be treated or its delivery as a condition of the premises license. Uh, so there's real grip, if you will, to ensure that that event management plan is delivered. Um, so then just dropping through the uh, document um, to please page uh, 29. Uh, there is the, I'm going to call it the non-representation, but the representation, the positive representation, if I can call it that, from the police. Mm -hmm. And the point that I am bound to make to the committee, and without wanting to uh, embarrass the officer, is that um, this is um, the, the, the words that are used. Were I to use them, well, you might say to me, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? I, I do <laughs> ask you to take really careful note of the fact that this is offered by the police um, and uh, essentially acts to all intents and purposes as though it was a reference really for the applicant and for the uh, application. It is unusual in my experience to have officers feel that it's important to make a positive uh, comment. Often when they are not objecting to the application, what they choose to do is not to engage in the proposal. And the um, effectively the penultimate line, um, uh, I believe that the conditions they have suggested are proportionate, are in line with the type of event they hope to run, the location they've elected to use for the festival, and will help promote the licensing objectives well forgive me for being flippant that's pretty much i think you can presume my closing remarks at, at the end of these few comments and it's very much in line both with your licensing policy but also with for mr white's benefit paragraph 912 of the national licensing guidance where essentially it's recognized that the police view on crime and uh, disorder matters is to be given considerable weight um, and really you need look no further than the police commentary throughout that uh, positive representation to know that they feel uh, entirely comfortable with what's proposed. Now that then leaves the representors um, and you will be aware that we have got two representations that raise questions as Neil has identified about the way in which these activities are being proposed. Mm -hmm. so, so those are set out on page, they start on page 23, the one from Mr. Brown. Yes. He's here, of course, so I don't want to presume to speak on his behalf. You'll hear from him in due course. But there is reference to security control measures, paragraph one, vehicle and pedestrian concerns, parking, paragraph three, noise, paragraph three, and then some commentary about Margam being a suitable uh, location. I, I'm not unsurprisingly going to say much about Margam. Obviously, committee will be only too aware that each application is to be considered on its individual merits. So the <laughs> respective merits of, of other event spaces within the borough really isn't, isn't particularly a point. Uh, and then there is the second um, representation, which is page 25, which again talks in vehicle and pedestrian traffic Mm -hmm. and concerns about litter. So let me address you on those points, if I may. The first point then inevitably uh, is to go to the conditions of the license. I've made the point about Mr. Malou and the police essentially commending the application, 
conditions to you. But what I say unashamedly is all of the points that are raised within the representations are covered in the operating schedule. Now, if through the course of the hearing this afternoon, residents were to raise something that isn't specifically covered in the operating schedule, uh, and if we can do it, we will be happy for that to be a condition within the license. There is no resistance here to ensuring that we deliver an event about which everyone is rightly proud. So um, if you're wondering, well, why haven't you sorted that out in advance? We, as I mentioned, Mr Dudley did provide a fairly comprehensive reply to the representors. That was, I think, passed on through Neil's uh, team uh, and we've not heard back. No criticism of anyone of that, but, but we'll just have to wait to hear what's said this afternoon about residual concerns to see if we can then find conditions that will uh, suit those points. But we don't resist um, doing that. We're not wanting to be uh, difficult. We're wanting to have a license and have conditions that everybody can feel confident will do the event uh, justice. Um, that then, um, though, leads me on to the event um, management plan index, just to take you to that, if I might. And um, that was one of the additional attachments rather than contained within your original agenda. Um, and it's got the sort of slightly blue. Um, yeah. Um, all I wanted to do uh, this afternoon, please, Council, was just take you through, and, and you'll have had a look at it yourselves, just quickly, the list of the index, effectively, mm -hmm. of what this document will concern itself with. Because although to start with, obviously, it's setting up the nature of who is involved, what they are doing, uh, so on and so forth. As you move through the index, you'll begin to see, for example, at 18 and 19, that stewarding and security is its own policy in addition to the various conditions that are contained in the license itself. You'll see as you go, again go through it, toilet provision mm -hmm. at 24. Uh, you will see fencing and barriers at 29. You will see um, road closures at 35. You'll see traffic management at 36. You'll see emergency vehicle access at 37. You'll see counterterrorism and hostile vehicle mitigation and that sort of thing at 38. The, the point that I'm wanting to make, probably the obvious one, is that we would say unashamedly that we are really carefully considering all of the points that have been raised by the, the residents already and that you can see that within the context of the conditions and you should be able to see that within the context of the event management plan. But even if you discount all of that, I do then just take you back to the operating schedule and the point that I made about the operating schedules interaction with the officers and the safety advisory group. Essentially from now, if you're minded to grant a license, uh, there will be a continued dialogue with safety advisory and that's all of the relevant officers through the planning of this event and you will see in the operating schedule that there are various timelines about the provision of materials and details. I'll give you a tiny example. We've provided some materials to safety advisory in advance, not to presume anything about today's decision, but in order to make sure everybody's fully appraised at the earliest opportunity. There's helpfully been a meeting and a discussion between officers who then come back to us asking a series of questions, and there's proposed to be meetings in the fullness of time, uh, subject to the receipt of a license, uh, once responses have been provided to that. So that process is already underway. This is not concertinaed into a, a post 17th of January procedure. A and obviously I've touched on the pre-application consultation point. You know, frankly, the conversation has been ongoing since September. So that I hope I, I appreciate it. Perhaps it's a little bit broad brush. A and as I say, we'll be happy to take some detail from the from the residents, but boldly though it may be, we are on top of this and you can take, I hope, some comfort from the conditions, the event management plan uh, from that. So then just quickly on your licensing policy, again, perhaps as much for the benefit of Mr White as anything else. So, and, and with apologies that I 
mistakenly was looking at your policy that expired last year rather than this. Um, but I think I'll, uh, I think I have the right paragraph numbers to refer you to to you in the new policy. So the way in which uh, licensing interacts with the economy and tourism, paragraph 17.1, early consultation with responsible authorities recommended. Um, the uh, way in which you will look to South Wales Police for the main source of advice on crime and disorder matters, that's 2810. 2811, 2812. The paragraph 912 of the national guidance that the police view on matters of crime and disorder will normally be given considerable weight. The interaction between licensing and cultural strategies, live music, dancing and its importance and significance. I think 177 and 1712 in your existing policy. Um, and I'm bound to make the point that bearing in mind, well, I'm hoping as we move out of uh, a, a COVID restriction slash lockdown world that the significance of music, uh, live music, dancing uh, and celebration, frankly, uh, will not be lost on on anyone uh, on this uh, call um, and least, not least the policy, to be fair which makes specific point about uh, encouraging and promoting live music dance uh, for the wider cultural benefit of the community, which I think is 1712. Um, so in simple terms, uh, and to summarise it, I, I will just ask you to really look at the police letter. Uh, mm -hmm. That last paragraph that I, I mentioned, none of these uh, events and activities are ever undertaken without risk. We accept that. And we are sensitive to the fact that some residents have expressed some concern. But what you do want to be looking at, I'd suggest, on applications of this sort is that you've got the right team behind the application. And we say unashamedly that's the case, that they've got the right attitude and approach to engagement with officers and the council. I hope unashamedly I can say, well, that's clearly the case. And that you've got the sort of enforcement and compliance grip that you would hope to be able to see so that for all the promises of the solicitor who comes along, you know that actually you can hold them to account and you can make sure that they deliver on their promises. And that's what both the operating schedule does, but also importantly, Mr. Malou's last condition that says that to all intents and purposes, the event management plan is to be treated as a condition and delivery of it is to be treated as though it were a condition in any event. So I hope that that is a fair summary from me. Thanks for letting me go on perhaps a little longer than I, I first expected. So apologies for that. Um, but that's subject to any questions you've got and subject to the um, to, to Rob, Sarah and Ollie introducing themselves. That's probably all from me. Thank you very much, Mr Phipps. That was quite comprehensive, even though, as you, as you say, it, it was quite very broad as well. Yeah, thank you very much for that. So I'm going to call on now uh, Sarah to Ollie Bartham and Rob Dudley, uh, as Mr Phipps has said earlier, just to give a brief introduction to yourself um, to the subcommittee. Uh, Miss Patel has her hand up. Oh, Miss Patel. Oh, it's just... Ms. Patel, did you, do you have a question? Well, she just lowered her hand, Jo. I lowered my hand. Oh, right, that's fine. I will I will be coming to questions, so everybody will have their opportunity for questions. So if you have a question, I suggest you just jot it down as an aid memoir because uh, and then we can we can you can bring it up at the proper time. I will just uh, say just before we go to those three named people, uh, Nadine, um, didn't introduce the member of the press uh, at the roll call so I would just like to welcome uh, a press officer as well to today's meeting okay so uh, there we are Sarah too Ollie Bartlam and Rob Dudley in any order that you wish who's going to go first uh, I'll go first chair yeah. so uh, Rob Dudley thank, good afternoon thank you. Uh, so yeah I'm, I'm Rob Dudley I'm a director at we are the fair I've mm -hmm. got 15 years experience in producing and managing festivals and large scale events. Um, I've got a particular responsibility for licensing and compliance and event safety, which includes acting as an on site event safety advisor at events such as this. Uh, and I've got experience of working with clients and local authorities throughout the UK and Europe. Um, 
included in, in Cardiff, Swansea, Newport and Anglesey. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I'm Sarah, I'm a senior account manager um, with five years experience at We Are The Fair in event health and safety and I now head up the growing health and safety division um, within the company. So within my role, I'm responsible for overseeing all of the health and safety clients, uh, managing the safety team, authoring event safety paperwork, such as the risk assessment and event management plan, liaising with the SAG and local authorities during the event planning phases, and also acting as event safety advisor on site for our events. And I also support Rob with licensing applications and ensure that we are compliant with those both on and off of site. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Molly Bartlam and I am the event producer for In It Together Festival. Uh, much like Rob, I've um, been in the festival business and the live event space now for 15 years. Um, I've run uh, large scale events up to a capacity of 80,000 um, at places such as Wembley Stadium. Um, but I've also worked in South Wales now for uh, over six years and I've produced a number of festivals in that time. Uh, annually over six festivals now uh, in Cardiff, uh, three festivals in Newport, one recently in Swansea and uh, fortunately uh, those glowing reviews that have come from the police are down to the hard work that we, um, all of us in the team have put into these events as we've built carefully and slowly and gradually over the last six years and um, yeah I'm looking forward to working with you all. Thank you, thank you very much. OK, um, so that's the first uh, submission on behalf of the applicants. Um, the second uh, is the re reasonable authority. Well, uh, Peter Maloch is not uh, present today, but he has submitted the report um, that's in your bundle. So we're not going to be having a verbal response from him. It just is the um, the evidence that is in the bundle. Um, ward members, um, there are no ward members present. Uh, I am, they are aware of what's happening today, obviously, but um, they, they are not present here today. Um, license holders. So there, there isn't a license holder as yet. <laughs> um, any interested persons? So now I will come to um, the residents, Colin Brown and Frida Patel. Um, so I'll call on Mr. Colin Brown first. Um, Mr. Brown, when you're ready. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. OK, I've, I have to apologise. I missed most of Mr. Phipps's conversation. I had a power cut here and had to uh, get back on. I just caught the last few minutes. So if I go over something that he's already said, then I apologise for that. Well, if I could just interject there, he was just um, basically uh, going through the written reports that have been submitted. So if you've had those reports, he was just pointing out a few things along the way. So whatever you uh, have come to say, please uh, say it now to the subject. Yeah, well, I did read those reports and yep. uh, they're obviously a very reputable organisation with a lot of uh, background and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, quite uh, aware of risk assessment, procurement of the land, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep. And I'm, ju I'm just a bit uh, confused as to why, when you see a lot of the uh, um, events they have held, have been at country parks, Wembley stadiums, places where they have their um, events like these are normal, and we have a Rolls Royce of an event place in Margam Park. Now I understand it from my local councillor that initially there was a discussion with uh, um, We Are The Fair and they um, uh, had a discussion and were waiting on a reply or some feedback from We Are The Fair. And as far as I'm aware that the council was fully uh, uh, happy to um, and the car and the park were happy to have the the, the event there, and s events of these days have been held there, and they've been successful. The, um, uh, there have been some traffic issues when it's large crowds, but they are having uh, been very very successful events. Now it seems to me the uh, the event site which I'm surprised wasn't shown on the statement. We had uh, 
uh, an event site showing a, a basic layout of where the campsites were, etc., in relationship to the houses in uh, um, uh, uh, St David's Park, Eggleston, and other and other businesses that it borders on. And um, some of the questions that I asked, I, it, it was it was as if um, Margon Park has been totally excluded when I think it would have been a perfect site for this. So I'd like to understand why that happened, and if if it's such that um, the area of, of the of the farm is 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 where it's going to happen, I think that there should be a lot of protection for the people who live in the area, and not only the people who live in the area, but the people who attend it, because twenty thousand is a major risk event. Just let's, let's be honest about it. If it's such a concentrated area, twenty thousand people are come in. At the end of a pandemic, who knows, there could be 10,000 people outside without tickets trying to get in. So I think there needs to be a, a very good um, policing and traffic uh, uh, highways and, and, uh, and uh, management teams uh, to look after not just the residents and the businesses in the area, but the people who attend it. And I just, I just think that um, it's, it's a very, very high risk situation which they say that they've um, used to, but it appears to be they've done it in, in locations that were, you know, well organised for events. And I don't believe that the, you know, the farm is 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 a good place for this. Um, you know, I apologise to the farmer because he obviously wants that business, and I can understand that completely. But I do think it, I'm confused as to why this would happen. Uh, in, in this area when you've got sort of a, a perfectly adequate place uh, across the road from it. So um, really that's all I've got to say, but. Uh, okay, Mr. Brown, that's fine. Thank you very much. So your view basically is that um, it, the, the site itself is not suitable in your opinion. Is That's basically what you're, you're saying here, is it? That's correct. OK, OK, um, well, as I say, the hearing will continue. We will have submissions from everybody and uh, questions will come later. But now it's just uh, statements as to why you're here. So that's fine. I'm going to call now on Farida Patel, please, to address subcommittee with what you feel about this application. Exactly what Colin has said. I okay. feel that light is not suitable. And I want to know why they decided on this site. Is it because it was easy to pick a site? And and obviously there is a problem with the, I mean, you know, security, etc., is very important. And we as residents in this area will have a high high reaction to the security, et cetera. I know that you've said that you take it seriously and that you will do as much as you can. And I know the police are involved to some extent, but it's still not right. What about residents who say something happens to somebody in the area, somebody who needs an ambulance? What is going to happen to that? Okay. What is going to happen to all the security issues there? Okay. And I mean, I, I know I mentioned litter in my uh, in my thing, but I don't mean litter in terms of litter. I'm talking about what if somebody throws something into your garden? It's possible, isn't it? Okay. So have you? What is the contingency for that? Right. Do you have, is that the the concerns that you have? Is that it's the wrong site? Um, you feel you're worried about emergency access and possible maybe damage from people throwing things in your garden? Yes, I do. Not okay. only just throwing things into my garden, just throwing anywhere and everywhere. Right. Okay. Um, anything else at this point? This is just this is your time to sort of address the committee. No, at the moment, those are the issues. I okay. think. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Ms Patel. No, no, that's OK. All right then, OK. Um, there will be opportunities for everybody that has spoken to ask questions of anybody else, so we'll get to that in, in, in a moment. Um, so subcommittee, we don't normally speak uh, at this point, but uh, legal services, do you have anything to say um, at the beginning of it? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, usually it's no questions to the parties and that would begin with the legal regulation. Yeah, it's, yeah, I'm just going through the, all the different people. So um, we've heard from everybody that wishes to speak. So quite correctly, uh, Mr White has said that we will now proceed to questions from everybody that has spoken, if they do indeed have any, of anybody else that has spoken. So I shall go um, straight back to um, Mr Chappell. Um, I'll go to Mr Chappell first and then I'll go to legal services, Mr White, uh, with you afterwards. So, Mr Chappell, do you have any questions from anybody that has spoken this morning so far, or this afternoon so far? Thank you, Chair. I have ju just a few. Um, okay. not, not a lot from what's been said, but I wonder if um, from the, the applicant side, uh, is it possible that we can look at the, the plan? Because I think it would help members if we can uh define the boundary uh, in relation to the to the the residence homes is it is it a good idea to bring that up chair yes by all means if any if you've got a plan that can be shared on screen um then the subcommittee can view that quite easily i do believe we have had it by email haven't we but it would be handy to share it for everybody this morning, yeah. this afternoon. Is it better that I do that or is it better for perhaps? Anybody, I'm not quite sure. If you've got it, Mr Chapel, you share it. OK. I, I think Mr Brown had his hand up then. I'm not, not sure if it was um, a query he had while I'm doing this. It was just that I had the... Um... I did have a, a copy of that uh, plan. Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you. I think Mr. Chapel is going to be able to share his screen now with us now, Mr. Brown. Thank you for that. OK, should be just coming up now. Yes, I can see it. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. OK, if it could be enlarged at all, Mr. Chapel. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Yeah. <coughs> Can, can you still see the plan? Yep. It's got other documents at the back. Oh, that's better. Is that better? It is better, yes. OK, um, so I think the only thing I wanted to uh, to raise with the um, with the applicants, if I can, and I think it would just help you members um, look at the the site, um, the proposed site of the, the festival. I understand, and I'm not sure who wants to go through this with me, whether, whether Rob or, or Ollie. Um, I must, I think from recollection on site, it's this corner here. Can you see where my cursor is? Uh, I can't. No, you, you can't see. Yes, me. I can. Yeah, I can see the little square now. Yeah. Okay. It's gone again now. Perhaps Ollie or Rob, can can you sort of describe the where it goes in relation to where number ten and number nineteen? Uh, are shown there in St David's Park, where where the the boundaries of the festival are, please. Neil, I can probably help with this if if you okay, want. Matthew, if, you're yeah, happy, yeah. if you're happy for me to, um, don't think we really. The only thought I've got is: is there a way to make the plan bigger for committee, just to to enlarge? That's the way. Well, com committee yeah, have have received this, and they ah, can view it on their iPads. Okay. But obviously, uh, if somebody is sharing a screen, you can talk about it as you're sharing it, so it makes it. A little bit easier, but we do have the plan on our iPads. Fine. So, uh, Councillor, looking at the plan that you've got in the what I'm going to call light green field uh, where the word number 10 is yeah. uh, and yeah. where the yellow pin is, yeah. that is proposed effectively to be a camping space, as is the darker field that I'm going to say is above it. Uh, right. you know, if you were going along the M4, the one that's further west, effectively. Yeah, I think you've uh, described that quite well now. Okay, there's, there's, then... a much better, there's a much better plan that shows a proposed layout of the site, showing the arena, the camping sites, the places for the uh, uh, caravans and RVs, um, and which I have a picture of, which I'm happy to share, came, came from Rob. 
So, um, Sorry, who's speaking now? Colin Brown, I beg your pardon. I did put my hand up a couple of times. Yeah, I, I know, but unless I call on you to speak, it, I've got to follow a set procedure, you see. So, I apologise um, for that. But no, I no, not at all. You, you, you don't understand. You know, it's probably the first time you've ever been to one of these. Um, so I, I will just go along with Mr Phipps for a while and, and then we'll see if we get all the information and I'll come back to you if necessary, Mr Brown, OK? Just just so it's been said once, Councillor, I, I won't have any objection to that plan being produced by Mr Brown if it's helpful in due course. Let me let me quickly finish off where I am on the plan that we're looking at and then perhaps you can you can go to Mr um, yes. Brown. So the as I come then down where the second pin is and to the right where it says 19 St David's, yes. Yes. the the uh, field uh, which has got the word David's within it, that's yeah. effectively camping. Right. Then if you come to the, um, the, the second pin, the one that's next to 19, you'll see a green, um, a light green field. It looks a bit mm -hmm. like Wembley. It looks as though it's been properly uh, mowed um, or the one that's been best mowed. That's not part of the application site and so there'll be no activity in that space right. and nor will there in what I'm guessing is the ploughed field which is to the right of the B4283. Right. Um, however, let's go back to Mr Brown's point, which is a point well made. If you go, councillor, please, to what I'm going to call the top right hand corner of the estate, which is about a couple of centimetres under the uh, S of yep. St David's Park by Tens and David's Park. Yes. Where it says St David's Park on that 10, that triangle. So if you go straight up the hedge line and on the right of it's the A48. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then essentially down the A48 to what is what I'm going to call the first significant track, which is if you go along that track, you end up in the cops area. It looks like a cops area to me yeah. where the word park is over. Mm -hmm. And if you skirt the north side of or the forgive me, the west side of the park, the top of the, the cops and park, and you come then back down to the hedgerow about a centimetre underneath the saint in Ten St David's Park. Yeah. That's the triangle broadly. I mean, none of this is perfect, but that's the triangle in which the activities will be taking place, essentially. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Mr Chapel. does that satisfy yeah. you? Yes, it, it does, actually. And I think that was um, a very good description of where I think I can see quite clearly where um, the proposed activity is going to be now from there, and, and particularly in relation to where uh, Mr Brown and uh, Ms Patel are, are living. Yes. Um, so I think the, the question then um, to the applicant, uh, to, to Matthew, if he wants to answer it, or, or, or Rob or, um, or Ollie, um, going through the objections we've had from, from the residents and picking out the, the, the relevant parts of their representations, in particular, I think noise mm -hmm. um, yeah. is the one that, that really stands out then there's going to be um, quite close to number 10 and probably to the right of number 19, um, a few thousand campers proposed for the, the evening and during the course of the festival. I'm assuming that when you get to your event management plan, things like noise in the, in the campsite from music, um, you know, people having parties after the event has finished, things like all that will be considered um, and to ensure that there is security on site. So if there is um, noise there, then that will be dealt with promptly. Yeah, so let me take that, if I may, Neil, in, in your counts through you, councillor, let me take that in stages. So first of all, noise management in the sense of the noise being generated from the licensable activities on site is broadly the preserve of the noise management plan. And cutting through it all, the noise management plan is worked up and agreed with your environmental health services team who essentially set a level at which noise is permitted uh, where they don't consider it will cause a public nuisance and we have to deliver to those levels so that's the the broad principle that broad principle essentially permeates into the whole of the event itself that's the really the the fundamental point there are levels 
and there will be dialogue and there will be engagement with the officers as Neil has rightly identified much more within the event management plan policies and procedures rather than the noise management plan or, or just the noise management plan um, that effectively attend to how we manage customers who are camping and what they will be permitted to do and what they won't be permitted to do within the the camping area. It, certainly in one of the plans that I've seen, and I'm sorry to tell you, there's a few of these plans floating around, but, but although I've pointed out to the committee the fields in which the various activities are broadly proposed, there's essentially a buffer, for want of a better phrase, um, between the estate and the uh, activities permitted. So we're not absolutely cheek by jowl up one against the other. Um, but all of the way in which people are permitted to conduct themselves, that's all covered essentially within the event management plan. Rob and Ollie, you may want to just add to that, but is that a fair summary? So you're on mute, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty accurate. So the the organised and regulated activities uh, are in the, the festival arena, that triangle of land that Matthew described. Uh, and stage orientation is something that's considered mm -hmm. uh, as part of a noise point of view. So we work with the, the technical production team and the noise consultants to make sure that the, the stages themselves are orientated in the, the best possible direction to avoid noise bleed out of the, the, the site. And then in terms of the campsites, managing the campsites, they've been laid out in such a way that the, the quieter campsites are closer to the residents. So the family campsite and the VIP campsite are, are closer to those uh, those addresses. And then the general campsite is to the, the north of that site. Um, campsites will be patrolled 24 hours a day by security teams. Uh, and included in a, a list of prohibited items in those campsites will be things such as speakers so that people yep. aren't able to have unauthorised after after hours parties. Uh, and if people do have small Bluetooth speakers that they, they have got on them, then security patrols will be able to, uh, to respond to that and, and shut down any of those instances. Ollie, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. You guys have, have summarised perfectly, thank you. OK. I'll go back then to Mr Chappell. Thank, thank you, Chair. I have no further questions for um, for the applicants at this stage. Uh, perhaps I could just ask um, or make a point really to the to the residents. Um, they, they have brought up about the site and its um, suitability. Um, which, which is fine. That's what that's what we're here to to discuss today. But obviously, references to Margam Park um, are not relevant to this application. Uh, this application is for this site, Old Park Farm site. Um, it does relate to Margam Park, so so I'm not going to to question that um, any further. Uh, I just wanted to ask either of the residents really. A um, lot of their uh, submissions today was about Margam Park and the site being inappropriate. But if we put Margam Park aside. Yeah, I wonder if they could um, just expand a little bit on the points that they've made in their representations, in particular to the relevant parts of their uh, representations about noise. Um, so specifically what their concerns are there and their concerns regarding sort of antisocial behaviour, perhaps because they mentioned you know things being thrown um, from from the site into their into their garden. So I just wonder if we could touch just a little bit more on those particular points as yep. opposed to um, referring to Margaret Park, please. Yep, um, and I thank you for that. And um, it is difficult sometimes when you're in the chair and you can hear people who are not used to the, the sort of procedure that they have their points to put across, but not all, as you say, um, are actually pertinent to what we're actually discussing today. We're not discussing Margaret Park, never it's not on the agenda here. So the application deals with this site. And as you quite rightly say, that's what we're here to discuss. So there's no need actually uh, for you to uh, indicate because I know that um, Mr. Chappell has asked both of you for your uh, responses to his question. So I will come to, I'll go to Farida first 
and then I'll go back to um, Colin Brown um, afterwards. So Farida Patel, please, if you would respond to what Mr Chappell has just said. Oh, hi, Mr Chappell. Thank you for that. I just want to say that it's nothing to do with Margam Park. It's just that the site isn't suitable right. because it is so close to the residents and it's very close to my house. And how am I going to deal with that? That's what I want to know. It's easy to say, oh, yes, the police will be there. It's easy to say, what about emergency services? What about somebody who is disabled and cannot, cannot move about? And it's really, really important that those issues are taken into consideration. OK, uh, Mr Brown, could you answer uh, Mr Chappell, please, regarding the site that is under application today? Yeah, well, um, with regard, with, you know, I'd be very concerned, as I said, about the, the traffic control. The A48 uh, leads off, uh, off the M4 which we know when we have events at Margam Park, they, they can be quite uh, uh, congested areas and everything. And I think uh, this this event may be bigger than anything has ever been at Margam Park. Maybe, I don't know. But, um, you know, the it, it seems to me that as long as we can get access out of our premises without having to have any sort of permit structure uh, of, of vehicle movement or whatever, um, you know, and can be assured that there'll be no entrances onto the um, onto the uh, uh, site uh, via the south side of of St David's Park, mm -hmm. which means that hopefully it'll keep it open that we can at least get out that way. Because uh, you know, we, we've I've lived in this area over twenty years, and I know how difficult it can be, even on a busy workday, trying to get out onto the uh, A forty eight right. from St David's Road. So. Uh, um, you know, I think I think there needs to be a lot of, of of control of people trying to get into the site via uh, St David's and uh, Eglos Nenev. I think there needs to be control of people uh, approaching from the South Canary area, and that we we have uh, um, an ability to get out and and, and carry out our business uh, as as best we can. OK, well, you, you've answered uh, Mr Chappell's question with a ch with a question that I presume that you will be asking when I come to call on you. Um, so uh, do you have anything other than a question? From me? Yeah, from you. T Mr Chappell uh, asked if you could sort of highlight the concerns of this site that you have um, for this application. Well, certainly traffic control. Traffic. And, and, and personnel, uh, tra you know, uh, either travelling along the A48 or the B42, whatever it is, the uh, Walter, uh, uh, Walter Street. Yep. I think that is a big issue. And I think where the campsites are located, uh, fortunately for me, I, you know, I don't have my rear garden uh, alongside those campsites. You know, the, I think there should be at least a, uh, a, you know, a real good buffer zone between them and uh, and, and, the, and the field, uh, uh, the, uh, the camping areas, um, and uh, and that's it. Now, that, that's fine. Um, I'll go back to Mr. Chapel now because I don't know if you've finished uh, questioning, Mr. Chapel. Yeah, I think I have, Chair, because I think the the answers to my questions have raised questions that both Miss <laughs> uh, Patel and uh, Mr. Yes. Brown probably would like to ask. Of the, yes. of the event organisers um, and perhaps they can address some of those concerns when when we get to, to their questions. I, I can see that Ms Patel has her hand up again, Chair. Yeah, um, I'm going to go, um, Ms Patel, I'm going to go, um, although Mr Chapel did address you, so I will come to you. Uh, Ms Patel then, can you um, answer Mr Chapel? Yeah, I'm just saying that whatever Mr Brown has said, I agree with a lot of things that he said, so I just want to mention that to you. Oh, that's fine. Yes, I mean, that's what you're here for is to tell the subcommittee of your concerns for this application. So that that's absolutely fine. Um, so, Mr. Chapel, you have actually concluded, I believe, your uh, questions. Thank you, Chair. 
Yeah, lovely. OK, then I will call on Mr White, um, the legal officer. Do you have any questions for anybody that's spoken so far? Uh, I, saw, I saw you just raise your hand, Mr Vips. I'll come back to you now in a moment. Uh, Chair, it's actually um, the applicant's representative who can ask questions now, not legal services. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I'm following the wrong one here. Uh, right, so uh, Mr Phipps, did you want to answer um, questions raised by those questions earlier from Ms Chappell? Um, yes, I think Mr um, Mr White, if you'll forgive me just going with the, the councillor, just in terms of slightly outside of your normal protocol, but I agree, councillor, I think, with the point you make, is that would it be helpful for the flow of the hearing and for the benefit of the committee if I just make some observations about the questions that have been raised, even though it's technically not in the in the right running order, as I'm sure it's Mr. Fine. White will yep. be quick to point out. But it just, you know, the, the issues have been raised. It's fair that we address them. Let's do it when it's fresh in our minds what the queries are. It seemed oh, to me was at the point, really. Absolutely. Go ahead. So look, let me let me do if if I met I mean there's a few points that have been raised and, and let me just do traffic first of all. Yes. What I can't hope to do on in this hearing is effectively provide every last piece of detail about the traffic management plan, um, because I mean that just isn't you know it just wouldn't work for for any of us. But let me just raise the the primary points of significance. Uh, you'll see from the conditions and from the event management plan that there's reference to traffic. There's already a subdivision group of the safety advisory group which is focused only on issues of traffic. The traffic dialogue and discussion is significantly advanced and we are only too aware of it needing to be sufficiently advanced in order to make sure that we can deliver a nuisance free event. In terms of Mr Brown's point, I think I'm right. I can confirm no southern access through or via the, forgive me, bought B432 effectively the estate or, or the lane or road leading to and from the estate mm -hmm. and, a, and a couple of uh, points it's important to make there will be a close interaction with the AA and there will be a robust AA signage plan adopted that will form part of the traffic management plan and you'll know this yourselves those yellow signs that we've seen whether we're going to the rugby the races or, or whatever it might yeah. be that that everyone has seen um, there will be traffic marshals at key locations effectively guidance directors all throughout and around the site and these are not in the site these are uh, out and around the site which will be fully risk assessed for all of the uh, candidly sneaky ways in which people try and think that they're going to be able to jump a bit of a queue or something like that. That will be very much part of the risk assessment that's undertaken. Now, also worth bearing in mind that for activities and events that we're proposing, there is a staggered arrival. It's not a concert where, say, it starts at 12 noon and finishes <laughs> at 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. So it is important just to bear in mind that although um, residents are quite right to identify the volumes as events and organisers of these sort of events will tell you, some people will arrive on Thursday, some people will arrive on Friday, others particularly day ticket holders will likely arrive for the day on which they're engaged or interested and that might be just the Saturday and or just the Sunday. Um, but um, so that I hope just it only touches on but I hope that that touches on some of the, the, the traffic points. The, the second point then just to go back to the question about rubbish or litter being thrown into gardens there will be community patrols essentially there will be people out in the community undertaking assessments. I've mentioned the noise management team who will be uh, undertaking assessment of the off uh, site levels, but there will also just be good community patrol practice to check that things are being attended to uh, properly. Uh, some reference also then to the emergency services and the disabled and whether they are being taken into consideration in the planning process. Uh, that um, Farida raised, absolutely they are. And again, you need only look at the operating schedule and the event management plan for that. Uh, appreciate that probably doesn't cover everything, but I hope I hope that's a, a helpful couple of observations. Okay. Yeah, 
Are we going back to um, those uh, question questioners now? Are you happy with the uh, responses that you've had? Mr. Brown, Ms. Farida Patel. Yes, well, it sounds it sounds a, a plan anyway. That's that's the main thing. But uh, okay. um, I just just wanted to say um, he said there would be key uh, personnel at, at key uh, locations to protect people getting onto the site. Uh, but will there be key personnel stopping people coming into our our, our uh, housing estates? Uh, I mean, there's only two entrances: one at Eglos and the one at St David's. Which would be directing traffic at all times. That it's not. It's not a parking space. That uh, you know. It's it. These these areas uh, are not for uh, um, attendees to park up and walk in. You know. We could even if they're not. Even if they are people who don't have uh, uh, valid um, tickets. Um, you know. So not only should he stop people getting onto the site for free, but mm -hmm. actually entering our areas, which are residential areas and uh, and protecting them. So key you. points there. Yeah, I, I think on. Mr Phipps did actually say, and I, I would ask him for clarification on this. Did you say that there will be no entrance from the St David's Road, the B, I've forgotten what it's called now, sorry, that the residents use to enter their estate? There will be no access, either vehicular access or pedestrian access onto the site from there is is that what you just said so you're on mute mr phipps sorry apologies That's okay. That's okay. Let, let me if not to be rude to you councillor but let me just give mr brown a straight answer to a straight question yes is the right. one word are... answer to to the question and just i i i'm afraid every self-respecting solicitor will now have to spend a minute developing what the word yes means and apologies for that but the straight answer is yes mr brown that we will be doing that second answer to your question councillor is yes there okay. will not be any access effectively on what i'm going to call the south side of the site for want of a better phrase i, I have got I, i'm not planning on producing it today but i've got a plan showing the various gates into which you access the site whether you know however you may be arriving at the site effectively all the gates run along the a48 for want of a, a simple answer to the to the issue i'm obliged and, for that. <laughs> and and the access to the sites will only be permitted through the gates and the security patrols and the way in which the site will be set up effectively prohibits anyone else from gaining access other than through the gates um and so you won't be able to, and frankly, there would be no point in you parking on the what I'm going to call the southern estate side, because if you do, you've got a hell of a long walk around the rest of the um, uh, rest of the farm in order to get back round to the right hand side in order to allow you to access it. Um, the other, um, I think, point to make is that if you Obviously, if you are a ticket holder, and it may be that Mr. Brown's concerns about non ticket holders, but if you're a ticket holder, there's nothing in it for you to park other than on the site. It's more convenient, yeah. it's quicker. You're going to have in, you know, you're going to have a bag, you're going to have water bottle, you might have in camping scenario, you might have a tent or a sleeping bag or what have you. I mean, there's no good reason, candidly, why anybody wouldn't want to park on site. Um, so, you know, we're respectful of the risk. We will risk assess appropriately. We'll do that, engage with all of the officers on that. But um, and nothing is without risk. And I accept that that point fairly made by uh, Mr. Brown and, and Farida that they want to manage out any risk to themselves. We're respectful of that. But but currently we believe our, our plans are more than sufficient to cater to this. OK, well, thank you for that. I acknowledge that you said you would put some sort of security at the entrances to our 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 our, uh, our streets that lead into the estates thank you yes can i i not wanting to now quibble with you having given you a straight answer but when we just say security it will be traffic traffic related measures traffic managers if you will it won't necessarily be a big burly chap um you know who's a, who's a doorman at a nightclub the rest of the year round just to, just to say no thank you and I think we need to bear in mind as well that it is a public highway. So although you wouldn't want anybody to be able to access your site who is going to the festival, there will be 
people who are members of the public that need access to that site, maybe visitors of other uh, houses. So you couldn't put anybody just there stopping traffic coming in unless they were residents. So I just want to make that point. I think that we have to yeah. be fair. Council, that's a very fair point. I mean, what we essentially will be ensuring as best we are able is that the yeah. festival doesn't unreasonably intrude onto the residents by causing them a nuisance. Obviously, if someone's visiting someone in in the estate, well, they're perfectly entitled mm. to do just to do just that. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be for us to stop them. No. But if but if they were attendees who were whether they are lost or whether they are for whatever reason trying to park other than yeah. in the right places, we will have signage, we'll have people, we'll have measures, we'll have responders, um, etc. In order to ensure they don't. Okay, there we are. Um, I'm just going to quickly go back to Farita. Um, did you have another question? Yeah, I want to just comment on what Mr. Phipps is saying. Mr. Phipps, it's very commendable to what you are trying to do. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that's not the way of the world. It doesn't work that way. I have been to plenty of festivals, Glastonbury, etc., and it doesn't work like the, the way you hope it will work. So I commend you for what you are saying, and I commend it, you for your enthusiasm. But I'm sorry, I don't uh, hold all your all what you have to say in 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 all. Okay, thank you, Miss Patel. Okay, I, I yes, I don't know that I can respond to that. I mean, I no. think that's that's a matter for committee, really, as to whether you accept what I've said or not. Yep. Okay. Um, there we are. Um, do the, I presume now you've both finished with your questions? Yeah. Yep, lovely. OK, um, so Mr White, I'm sorry, I've lost a little bit of um, traction on this. Now, there are no questions to the licensing authority because that's a written submission and the same to the police. We can't question them because they've just put a written submission in, so we can't do that. Um, do any members of the subcommittee have questions? to anybody that has spoken so far. Vice Chair, Councillor Dave Whitelock, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I was going to ask several questions on the access and egress, but that's already been answered. Okay. The only one question I got to the both residents, roughly um, how far from your houses to the site? What type of distance are we talking about? very hard to judge off the map. Mr. Patel, have... Sorry, Ms. Patel, what did you say? I said Mr. Phipps will have to answer that. Well, yes, no, okay, how, but... how far is you, Ms. Patel, how far is your garden from the proposed site? There's nothing but a hedgerow in the middle. Uh, right, OK. The garden backs on to the, on the sites. Uh, for a lot of the houses in St. David's, maybe one or two in Eagles and Unnith, and I think the uh, Avon landscape site is, uh, borders on it. And then, of course, there are some houses on the A48 that uh, uh, are, uh, are, um, are directly uh, 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 just have a hedgerow or a fence or something between them and the field, so suggested fields. So it's very, very close. Um, it couldn't get much closer, actually. Um, so that's the position. OK, thank you for that. Any other question, Vice Chair? No, th no thank you, Chair. OK, uh, I'm going to call on my Councillor Mark Prothero, another member of the subcommittee. Do you have any questions for anybody that has spoken so far? Thank you, Chair. No, nothing further from me. Um, there, there would have been a couple of questions, but they've been answered. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Lovely. Chair. OK, there we are then. Um, legal services, do you have any questions for anybody that has um, spoken this afternoon? Uh, I don't, Chair, no. Um, I, I would just uh, remind committee that uh, the applicant haven't yet had an opportunity to ask any questions that they might have. Yeah, 
Thank you. And that's a nice little nudge to me. Um, so I will go back to Mr Phipps as the applicant's representative. Do you have any questions that you wish to ask of anybody that has spoken this afternoon? No, uh, Chair, thank you very much. I hope refreshingly, no, I, I don't. Right. Um, I've, I've so a couple of points to make to you in closing, but nothing yeah, by way we'll of questions. We'll come back to summary. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anybody have any questions then that I haven't addressed? don't believe so. I just have a not a question on the actual uh, application. It's the date. Um, Mr Phipps, you know the date that you mentioned, the 3rd to the 5th of July or June? Is is that the um, Platinum Jubilee weekend? Yes. Right. I think it is. Okay. I just I, th I thought it was triggering something in my head, um, but that's fine. So I have no other questions. I believe that it's been quite a thorough uh, presentation. The uh, the documents that we had before were very thorough. The police have um, agreed wholeheartedly with the conditions. Um, therefore, um, I'm going to go back to um, the applicant for a closing summary. You may not enter in summary something which you haven't already spoken about, but you, you may wish to re refresh the memory of the subcommittee now, Mr Phipps. Thank, thank you, Chair. Look, I'm going to be uh, very brief. Um, we said in our introductory comments to you that we were an experienced expert uh, uh, team who could deliver a successful event. And in Mr Brown's comments, he generously said we were seemingly reputable, that there was lots of background material and that he was satisfied we had significant experience in risk assessment and procurement and so forth. Bluntly, we're not actually that far away from one another in terms of what we say, because what I say boldly is if you're going to have activities of this sort, you want to know that you've got someone who knows what they're doing someone who's done it before that can point to activities they've done it before in order to plan properly because the planning is fundamental and critical because and I entirely accept this point none of this is without risk as the residents have fairly said to Councillor Whitelock they're close to the applicant site no dancing around that at all but there is nothing about either policy guidance, the law or anything, frankly, that says, oh, because you've got residents that are near a site, the site's no good. The question that you've got to ask is, does the conditions on the license, does the event management plan, does the applicant offer you the confidence to allow this to proceed? Not, I hasten to add, that there would then be a failure to control, supervise and monitor the remaining five months of planning. Because, of course, that's all of the points I've made about safety advisory group, about responsible authorities and so forth. And, and and I couldn't but finish on this point. Even if you were not to accept, frankly, a word I've said, and I hear what Farida says about that's not always the way that life works out. Then I can see he's waiting in the lobby, I suspect, for your next case. Yes. But, but Nick Bailey, your South Wales Police Licensing Officer, mm. um, uh, and I suppose this is behind his back, but I can only uh, compliment him on the transparent and uh, open letter that he has sent in telling you about what he thinks about it. You know him well. Mm -hmm. He's not in the habit of throwing compliments around too casually. Even if you discount everything I've said, and I'm not asking you to discount everything I've said, otherwise my clients will wonder what I was doing here in the first place. But but it, if you want to um, look carefully at his representation and Mr. Malouf's, that I hope tells you all you really need to know. We are not treating the grant of a license as the end of the supervision, the monitoring and the dialogue with residents and officers. Frankly, it's pretty much the start and so I'd invite you to grant the license and we will crack on and do the best job that we possibly can. Thank you Mr Phipps. Um, I, I will go now to um, the two objectors uh, to sum up if you wish to you do not have to but if you wish to sum up 
uh, what you've come here to say. Now's your time, so I'll go to Mr Brown first. Hello, yeah, I just think really that, um, you know, the event management plan, our referral, there isn't an actual event management plan that somebody can re re review, not that it should be myself, but somebody else. And the um, and the other document, which was the uh, SAG, I mean, surely, surely before a license is off uh, is given, these things should be in place. But we don't have anything to review, in my knowledge, other than a list of items in a in a in a uh, on a piece of paper which says these are the things that we will review or set about. The actual plans to physically do these things haven't been discussed and I don't I can't see how how a license can be authorized when um, these things are not in place they're going to be in place and I think that's the time maybe a deferral or something before it is issued but let's get something you know in black and white of, of exactly what's going to go what, what is actually going to happen all right Thank you, Mr. Brown. Have you completed? Sorry, yes, I muted. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Patel, please. Right, I agree with Colin, with whatever Colin has said. I agree that we have to make sure that we have oh. everything in place before anything is granted. And unfortunately, there isn't anything that we can discuss. We were never brought to the table at the beginning. And I don't know why we were never brought to the table at the beginning. We, we just had somebody come to the house and knock on the door and give me a Christmas box of chocolates. But that, that was a bit of bribery, I think. But other than that, no, we were never ever brought to the table to discuss any of this. So sorry, Mr. Phipps. I agree with what you have to say, but I don't, I disagree with you being granted a, a license today. Thank you very much, Ms. Patel, for your input this afternoon. Okay, I'm going to come back to um, Mr. Um, oh, jeez, God, my brain. <laughs> Mr. Chapel, I've forgotten your name, dear me. <laughs> um, just to sort of outline what the procedure is, because somebody's questioned the procedure. Um, here now, I don't know if it's going to be Mr. Chapel or perhaps Mr. White that would um, explain to uh, the two objectors today how the procedure works because they seem to be saying, well, we are going to be uh, looking at giving a license when it's not really uh, been sorted out what the license is. But to someone who isn't used to the way the licensing works, that could seem to be the case. However, we know that all the conditions and the, the work that will proceed prior to any event ever taking place will be subject to those conditions. So I don't know who, who is best to sort of explain that to those objectors. I, I'll jump in about it. Just, Thank you, Mr. Chapel. Just, just very quickly, obviously the, the applicants have made uh, an application for a premises license. Um, yep. When that application is made and it's, it's duly um, advertised, then we have to deal with that application. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we're here today yeah. to, to determine the application that's been made. And I think you know the the application is going to be subject to the conditions that are set out in the operating schedule, plus the ones submitted by the um, the legal regulatory services officer, um, and subject to an event management plan, which will be going through the safety advisory group. That that's the position that we're in. Yeah. Um, you know, there there are timescales when they will have to put their event management plan, have it finalised and in place. They're not at that stage yet. No. Um, oh. and, the, and the application, obviously, the licence needs to be there before before an event can take place. Absolutely. Uh, Mr White, would you have anything to add to that? Um, no, Chair. No, nothing at all, really. OK, that's fine. OK. Um, are we finished with uh, summaries? Yes. Uh, Chair, Mr. Phipps has some questions. Is it is. Questions, Mr. Phipps, or? You're on mute. Apologies. 
Uh, no, it's a tiny point, please. It's not so much a question, but just it is a point to raise just because the points raised by the residents hadn't previously been raised before. And, and it's, if you will, it's a question for Mr. Chapel, but hopefully Mr. Chapel can just confirm. There is nothing unusual about the circumstance in which we find ourselves for large scale no. event licensing. This is the nature of how these Absolutely. things are done. There is a long lead in period. It, well, I can see Mr. White nodding, but I just thought that it may be, if I may say so, courteous to Mr. Brown and Farida just to hear that from from you rather than me appreciate there may be a degree of cynicism yeah. if I say it but just so that they understand this is this is the way these things uh, are applied for and the way in which they operate there's nothing there's nothing improper or, or nothing no. out of the ordinary about this today that was all no and I totally agree with you Mr Phipps but when you are a resident and you're not used to the way uh, committees run and procedures proceed um it, it can look like that and that's why I raised it and I would like to say from from the chair, there is nothing wrong with the procedure that we are following today. We it, it's been laid down in a very formal fashion. We've gone through it um, before and, and shall do so again. So I just wanted to make that plain to the two applicants, uh, to the two um, objectors that um, there isn't anything untoward. You don't always get the full detail of everything when a license is applied for. However, the conditions and the police have made representations to this. The conditions are such that we can have confidence that the four um, licensing um, objectives will be met if indeed this license is uh, granted. So um, that's I think how I'm going to finish that now uh, and I'm going to um, ask for Everybody who was given uh, their attention to this subcommittee this afternoon, my thanks. And I'm going to um, call on them to leave the meeting now so that the subcommittee uh, may meet and um, have their deliberations on this application. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm sure Thank you. that Mr. Chapel will um, give uh, the answers to all interested parties as soon as he has that information to his uh, uh, at his disposal. OK, I will, Thank you, may I ask, Chair, do, does Mr. Chapel ring or do you send an email? Usually ring or Lovely. email, whichever you I'll, prefer. I'll give you all a ring. Thank Lovely. you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay.